Good evening, everyone. I'm Bonnie Hunter, and this is Quilt Cam Night. It's um, the first week of February. I can't believe it's almost ready to be the second week of February, and being that February is our shortest month, I'm already wondering where the time goes. I am working tonight on some string blocks. These are four inch squares that I am covering with random strips of fabric for um, a foundation piecing project that I am actually going to be demonstrating on the quilt show with Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms. I'm extremely excited when I was contacted and told that um, Alex loves blue and white quilts and she wanted me to demonstrate Jamestown Landing. I knew that I was going to have to spend some time making more samples for this quilt. I'm trying to find a picture of it for you here. This is, this is Jamestown Landing, and it's from my book, String Fling, and we will be demoing it on the quilt show. I love combining traditional piece units, triangles, squares, four patches, nine patches, things like that, with string piece units for anywhere that there is a, a large unit that normally would be one piece of fabric. If that unit is big enough, meaning for me, it has to be at least a, a three-inch finished space for it to make it worth it for me to do all that string piecing in there. So I'm, I'm really hoping that Alex likes my project. I've got my entire bin <laughs> of, of neutral strings here. Everything, this is, it's like a compost bucket. This is just leftover uneven ends from trimming up fabric after I've cut my strips from it. It might be the end of a fat quarter. It might be some fabric that people have sent to me that I think would work great in here. Here's some Packers fabric. Are you out there, Andy? This is for you. Um, I've got, you know, f fabric that, that you don't know whether to qualify it as a color or a light, but as long as it is lighter than medium and no darker than a paper bag brown, I will use it. We've got things in here, um, gosh, re recycled shirt parts. That's part of a yoke right there. Leftover white on whites from, from back on the day, white on cream. All kinds of things with little spots of color because I, I don't want my string areas, even though they're neutral, to be just white on white or, or cream on cream. I don't mind a little bit of turquoise fish popping in there every once in a while. I don't mind, um, here's one that, that was really kind of, of an interesting piece of fabric. I actually cut it smaller because it was quite wide. There's so much light areas on here. And this will work fine, but I might get to the point where on some of these that there may be just a little bit too much color. So I would probably end up working around that and cut that much out. But I certainly could get by using the, the light areas in between it. So what I'm going to do today, and I've already got four of these made, left one under the needle. And I need to make 16, so this is what I'm going to be working on. Now, my phone book today was rather small, and I couldn't, so it wasn't, it wasn't 9 inches tall. In order for me to get 4 and a half inch cuts from that page, I would have needed a 9-inch phone book, but it was 8 and a half. So these, these squares are actually, um, I cut these at 4 inches, and I will be sure that I add my seam allowance all the way around. The paper's there just to give me a size to shoot for. Here's another one. This one's kind of a, a beigey tan with little black detail on it. It's not a black fabric, so I'm going to use it as one of my lights. I like to just cut a piece, oh, maybe at least a half an inch bigger all the way around than what my paper is, and lay that across the center of the paper. Will that one work? That one will work. Very, very small little piece here, and I'm going to put it right sides together. With, with this one. My rule is no narrower than three-fourths of an inch, and I think this one's pushing it. But if I can take in a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch, I've still got a quarter of an inch in the center. And these are the ones that are going to make the piecing look more interesting. So try not to have all of your strips just one width. I've got my stitch length set down to fairly, fairly tiny here. Whoops, I'm going to put that up in there. Get aligned here. And I am sewing an approximate quarter inch seam. Doesn't matter here. We just need sufficient enough for our doing here. 
Okay, so this is the one that's finished. And you can see the variety of strips and strings that I have pieced on there. They're different widths. They're different kinds of fabric. They have different scales of different things going on. There's a white on white, a stripe. This is another little Christmas print and another plaid. And this one is very, very, very pale pink. But I stuck it in there anyway for interest. And then another little triangle on the end. I try to have at least five strips on these. Some may have more, but most all of them have five. And I'm leaving this one under the machine so I can pull this one forward. And already I'm at a spot where I can show you. I've got just a little bit of paper showing here, but I probably don't want to seem this close to this corner because that's going to end up right where a bulky spot is, right where the seam allowance is. So I will probably place my next strip down a little bit to give myself a little bit more breathing space. And let's see what I can grab here. I've just got, see this is stuff that needs to go away. I'm just going to cut a piece. And I actually cut what's almost a square. So to make better use of that, I can fold that in half and cut it into a couple of triangles. And I'll be able to use that other triangle on another block. Okay. So I'm going to move this white one down. Can you see that it's it's down a little bit from the edge of the blue one? I'll sew my seam down here. This will still flip up and cover and give me my seam allowance, but the blue one won't be as wide and my seam won't be so close to the corner. We'll sew that. And then when it comes around again, when it comes off the machine, I'll trim that excess seam allowance away. I have my little iron set up next to me here. We are just covering to fill this paper, leaving seam allowance off the outside. Here's a fun little polka dot. I like this one. I've done all of the half square triangle units already. I left some of them as singles, some of them as just the broken dishes units, and some of them are sewn into half stars, and only two pair are sewn into a full star. So I've got step outs of the entire process for this, this project, and I think it should be good. Okay, so we're, we're getting there on this one. Now I'm going to add to this other side here. We're just covering, and we want to leave at least a quarter inch all the way around outside this paper at least and I shoot for more than that just because I like the wiggle room. Here's some more of that pink one. I've heard a lot of modern quilters call this kind of quilting low volume but I don't find anything low volume about this amount of scraps and all of these widths it's heavy piecing. Even though the color is light, it's still heavy piecing. So I don't I guess I don't understand that concept of low volume. If you want to call it a light area or a background area or a neutral area, fine. But low volume sounds like a shampoo that just didn't do its job. If you're new to Quilt Cam, I do like to answer your questions and see your pictures and your projects and whatever you're working on. You can leave your comment right on the um, Google Hangout out page if you're on, watching on YouTube. That will show up in my email. Or you can email me directly at quiltville at gmail.com. Those will show up in my email. You can leave a comment. If you're watching on the blog, leave a comment in the comment section or by clicking the blue guestbook button in the left hand sidebar of the blog. You can also leave a comment and all of these things show up in my email so I can get your re replies that way. What I can't do is read any comments that are being posted in Facebook. If you're watching through Facebook, those comments don't show up in my email and I'm far enough away from the computer that I can't um, get into the program and read those there.
Now this is a real fun mix here. Some recycled fabric, some white on white. Um, just a kind of a fun, fun little print here. I think this was another shirt and another shirt and then this little pink dainty little calico. Just very, very light in color. Here's a triangle. I can add this one on this side. Leftover triangles are great for the corners. I just sew all the way off the edge and leave that one in the machine and snip off the one behind it. So I only work on two blocks at a time. That keeps my chain continuous enough, but it saves me from having to rope in a whole long line of stuff I'm going to have to spend time pressing all at once. This is a little narrow one. This is probably pushing the boundaries on our three-fourths of an inch, but I think it will add some interest to this block. So we'll stitch him on there. The foundations I'm using are our phone book pages. And I like that they're very light and crisp and the paper tears off very, very easily. I don't use any water in my iron when I'm working with this kind of paper. I don't want any of the ink to come off, but this is an old phone book, and I can rub my fingers and rub, 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 and no black comes off on my fingers, so we know it's good. There's another one for the done pile. We're getting a nice little stack already. Let me check into the email and see who's tuning in with us. We've got a brand new guest book tonight. I got an email earlier. Thank you for emailing me. Um, I've been using one guest book host for the past, well gosh, since I first got into the, in, into the internet, so since 1996 maybe, and they are not um, doing guest books anymore. They said they've just not going to host those. So I had to find a new host, which is linked under the same button, but it'll take you to a new guest book tonight. In the inbox, we've got Vicki who says, I love the things you say, Bonnie. Well, thank you so much. And that's from Cheryl. And then this one is from Vicki. They're both replying on Google Plus. So that's why it came under the same thread. And she says, no visual, but I can hear you. Well, I don't know where you're watching me or why, because the video, um, seems to be working here, but let's see what anybody else says. Lynn says, Bonnie, I am a big fan. I noticed your shirt. Is it the same one you're wearing on your Facebook photo? <laughs> you know what? It probably is. It was just at the top of the drawer, so I put it on. So yeah, I think it is. I actually, when I find a shirt that I like, and it's in several different colors, it's like I'll take one of these and one of these and one of these, and they're all the same style, but they work as long as they're in different colors. Um, this one's from Kathy who says, uh, free motion quilting on a game quilt for my kids. I'm so happy to have Quilt Gam to help me push through. I'm doing a challenge through my local quilt shop where we each are trying to finish one UFO each month. Thanks for all you do. And that's Kathy in Gainesville, Virginia. And she is showing a picture. Oh, isn't that cute? That is really cute. So she's got a, it's a game quilt, and it's got, I guess, all kinds of different things that kids can do on the, on the quilt that she's free motion quilting. So she's hoping to make a lot of progress on that tonight. Really cute. Sheena says, I'm so glad that I caught quilt cam tonight. I'm coming down with a cold. Oh, no. And it's nice to have some company while I drink tea and make quilt sketches. I had to laugh at your low volume comment. I'm a younger, more modern quilter, if you will, and it took me a long time to figure out why modern quilters call their neutrals low volume. I actually use low volume in my Celtic solstice. I know, it's the weirdest term. I just, I just don't get it. Which is about 40% complete now. Thanks so much for sharing such a wonderful pattern as your mystery quilt. And that's Sheena in Alberta suffering through the beginning of a cold. I hope it doesn't last very long. Stay warm, girl. Lorraine says, all good here in Gilgandra, Central West North, New South Wales, Australia. Boy, did I butcher that one. Gilgandra. Is that right? I hope so. Never been there. Would love to someday. And this is from Andresa who says, I know you cut strips and squares and such for your scrap user system as small as inch and a half width. It looked like some of your strings were showing at the beginning of quilt cam were much wider, so I'm confused how you determine whether a long piece of fabric should be a strip or a string. If it's too ugly and I don't want to cut it in a strip or if I'm tired of it. I will toss it into the string bin. I want a wide variety in the string. So if 
if the strings were only things less than an inch and a half, it would be really, really boring because all the strips would be very close to the same width. So I want stuff from three-fourths all the way up to two inches in the string. So I just decide. Do I want to use this as a string? Do I want to use this as a strip? Um, for instance, let's see, that's not a good one. Okay, this is a piece of fabric that came from um, somebody who gifted me a box of stuff. Do you see how it has little cutouts here? And little cutouts here. And maybe it's a white on white that I'm just not really crazy about the texture of. Maybe it feels like, you know, not really great fabric, but good enough for something. That's the kind of thing I'll throw in the string bucket. Um, this Christmas fabric, it's, a, it's, like a, it's like two inches, but I'm definitely not going to use it in my two-inch strip bin. It's just too weird. It cuts up funny. There's, there's light areas and there's dark areas, and I'd like to get rid of it, so it's in here. Um, this one starts at about an inch and a half and tapers down to less than an inch and a half. So that's, that's going to go in the string bin. Um, this is just an oddball. That, I mean, I could, I could probably, can you see that it's uneven on the bottom edge? It's a little uneven on the top edge, too. I could probably get an inch and a half strip out of this. But it added more variety to my string bin instead. So really, there, there are no rules. These little pieces are from recycled shirts. These are the yokes. Could I get an inch and a half piece out of these? Yeah, probably. But sometimes the better use is just to leave it whole and sew it into the into the strings. Um, what else have I got in here? Okay, short chunkies like this. I need stuff like this in the string bucket to use as corners and, and stuff when I get towards the edges of the blocks. Could I get a couple of two inch squares out of this? Probably, but my two inch squares box is already full, so maybe this is better use over here. Same with this one. I could probably get a couple two and a half inch squares out of this, but maybe I would rather use it as a as a neutral string that has some interesting color going on. So you just you just decide. There's no rules and there's there's really no way it can be right or wrong. There is no rules that says that if you can get an inch and a half out of any scrap, you must cut it at an inch and a half. It's um where will I use this fabric the most? Okay. Here is well, this, this piece has some salvage on it. So I definitely can't get an inch and a half strip out of that because there's a big Honk and selvage on, on one edge. So that went into the string bucket. And then this one, I probably could get trim this down to an inch and a half. I think it's just a little bit wider than that. It's uneven on one end. Do I really want to use this old-fashioned print as a neutral, or would I rather have it in the string? So really, this the string bin has an awful lot of everything, um, up to some pieces are even a little wider than two inches. This, OK, I found this extremely hideous. I could cut this into a two inch strip, but it's pink on one end and beige on the other, and I would rather put it in the strings and, and use it for something where I didn't care, because as it was, if it was cut into a perfect strip, I'd probably never use this um, anywhere. So just decide. There are no rules. If you, if you really hate it, chop it up and put it in the strings, and then it's just a color. Okay. She says, thanks for Quilt Cam tonight. I've had problems watching you in the Firefox browser, so I'm trying out Chrome tonight, working on a mystery quilt being done at a local quilt shop. And I'm thumbs up with Chrome. I think Chrome is a good one. Sharon says, Quilt Cam, yeah. I'm sitting here in Illinois with snow drifts up to our tushes and temp predicted to be well below zero again tonight. Sitting here with a huge mug of hot tea and working on Pfeffernoose. Need some Pfeffernoose to go along with my tea. Love the brown and red combo, but my oh my, so much pressing and trimming. I definitely need to consider the purchase of a six and a half inch square up ruler. Thanks for all your inspiration. And that's Sharon. And I agree. I, I got new ruler um, recently, wrote a post on it this week. Absolutely love this this ruler. My favorite ruler has changed now where it has, it was a creative grids until they added all those honking big black circles that I can't read through. So I've switched over to the Frosted by Ulfa, and I'm liking that. Still morning, my favorite, but I'm liking the new one. Okay, new piece of paper. I only need 16 of these. So let's grab that piece with the honk and selvage, because we'd like to see it gone. And this one, it's a cream with blue and yellow. You may find that you have some of this in your stash. It's a neutral. It's on a cream background, even though it looks very blue and very yellow. 
as I was working on this quilt um, today, you know, my sister is um, expecting in June, and we just found out it's going to be a girl. And yet here I am making almost the center of a good-sized baby quilt. And yes, I'm cutting this down because I want to use it. And uh, I'm thinking that I might add some more units to these after I'm done with the quilt show and throw in some pink and blue in the border. So it'll be a blue and neutral quilt and pull in some pink out towards the border. And this may end up being her baby quilt because what am I going to do with these units after they're done? Fun combos so far. I like things that add just little spots of color. So maybe we'll add some of this that has that tiny bit of red. We'll have just just a hint of that red. These little 301s are just awesome machines. They will do 1300 stitches a minute. I need the corner. I need a bigger corner than that. How about this one? Will that fit there? And yes, we are used to talking to ourselves quite often. I need something wider. So this is where having pieces like like these kind of chunks come in handy when you want something to cover a corner. So yes, I could cut squares or bricks or whatever out of this, but if the bricks and squares are already full, you got to save some for the string bucket just because just because. So it's kind of like, you know, why did grandma cut off the end of her ham before putting it in the pan? Is it just because or because the pan was too small? You never know. Ah, I missed all the red. Okay, and my paper is falling off already before I trim, which means that my stitch length is too small, so I'm going to back that off just a hair. And here we go on this one so far. If you are on a digital machine, you're going to want to set your stitch length to about 1.5, and that is just a test. Now, this piece is too big, so I am going to actually cut that in half. And if the paper starts falling off, maybe go to a, a 0.2 or whatever the next line up is. Okay, so this place where I moved my strip down because this first strip did not go quarter inch beyond that line, so I put the next piece further down. I am going to trim extra seam allowance because we want to get the bulk out of there. And I just fold the paper back and eyeball a quarter inch. And there's another one for my stack. I really enjoy these. They're just a lot of fun to do. Except for when it's sliding off the paper. Those of you who are regular readers, you might remember my posting this morning that, oh my goodness, my tooth has fallen off. And we got that sorted out. Luckily, the dentist had a cancellation and was able to get me in this morning, and we just we looked at it, decided to glue it back on and see how long it will hold. And if it doesn't hold, 
then we'll do a new crown. It's, it was kind of iffy on whether we needed to just go with a new one or not, but I'm all about not having to spend $800 right now. <laughs> so, no new crown yet. Let's see. I also like to put things that are not so busy. See, here's another one of those. Did, would you really want to cut this down into an inch and a half strip, or is it just good enough just to just toss it in the string bin? It's still pretty much garbage, right? But it's big enough that I can use it for string piecing. So that's what we will do with it. I laugh when I remember my friend Tanya saying that I take the trash can approach to quilting. And she's right, I do. But it's fun that way. If all of your strings are looking like they are marching like straight little soldiers, you can also place things at a slight angle. I'm looking for something that might cover this corner and be fun. This guy. Are those holes there? No, I can go this way. You can place it, things at an angle and then sew them down. And that can make things just a hair more interesting. I like to trim any excess just to neaten it up. 16 of these. We can we can breeze through these and nothing flat, I'm thinking. But just think about all the stuff that you could make go away that makes a great scrap quilt. Actually. Because I'm chaining. I don't like a lot of strings just hanging off the edges of stuff. Here's one that has kind of a little blue pattern to it. You can see that it's uneven on the edges. Doesn't matter. Just sew her down. Okay. I'll check for more messages in a minute. If you're working on something, drop me a note. Let me know what, what you're working on. Send pictures if you can. I love to see that. Oh, yeah. That just barely covers. That's good. Maybe one more piece on this other end. I need something more chunkier that I can cut into triangles again. So maybe some of this stuff. This was a, a piece of white on white. I doubt if I turn it at an angle, can you see? Nope. I'm looking at the screen and I can't show, see what the pattern is to the camera. But it's one of those that it's the cream with a white detail and the white feels very painty. You know, stuff that we want to get rid of that has been in the stash for 20 years. But I will use it in a string quilt. So instead of cutting that down to an inch and a half, that's the kind of thing that I would just toss in the bucket and say, I'm done with you, and you're going to be in a string quilt. It's fun to get to the outside edges of the blocks and find where you can put some of those smallest little bits that you trimmed off. Okay, so this is another one. My paper goes right to the edge of the fabric. And I need to extend. The paper is my finished size. I need to extend another half an inch. But that seam will be right in the seam allowance if I don't move that next seam 
down a little bit. So that's going to make this guy a little bit skinnier. That's okay. We'll find a piece that works. That's really cute. So we have a tone on tone and this modern kind of thing with little blue petals and a piece of a recycled plaid. Happy girls. All right, let's check in, see who's watching along. Here is um, Anita who says, Hi, Bonnie. A good portion of the past week has been spent machine quilting my Celtic solstice while watching archived episodes of Quilt Gam. Since my colors tend more to the tropical side, I named mine Caribbean solstice. The final stitches on the binding are going in tonight, and the label gets lettered and signed in the morning. Thanks for a great mystery quilt and having quilt camp tonight, and that's from Cherry in Illinois. And I know it's very cold in there, but boy, I love her colors. They are more tropical. Looks like her oranges are more salmon than they are true orange, and she's got some turquoises and things going on in there. Beautiful job. Thanks for sharing that, Cherry. This one is from Sue in upstate New York, and she says, while watching Quilt Cam tonight, I'm working on Ohio Star Blocks for a baby quilt. Tomorrow is a big day. I bought a new motor for my 1947 Singer 1590 and will be putting her on. Awesome. She is full refurbished or fully refurbished and runs great. The old motor was missing part of the plastic on the back, so I only sewed with her long enough to see how beautifully she stitched, spent lots of time visiting the links from your vintage machine links and searching the web. Sue, I hope you enjoy your machine. Those, those class 15s, they are a class act. They are just a wonderful machine, beautiful stitch, hard workhorse. You will love her for years and years to come. Top of the inbox. So here's this one's from YouTube, which these the ones that come directly from YouTube, I'm always afraid to read because sometimes it's teenage boys that just really don't have any good comments at all. Move on. Just move on. We're happy in our sewing place here. This is from Mary, and she says, working on a baby quilt tonight. Since meeting you in Colorado last fall, I'll never look at scraps the same way. Finished piecing Celtic Solstice, my first Bonnie Hunter design, not my last. Thanks for all you do. Mary stay warm. I know things have been really chilly in Colorado too and yeah I will never look at, at scraps the same way again either. Fabric is fabric is fabric. Just sew it up. This one is from Sharon Jester who says, Hi Deb, I'm new and at quilting enjoy your videos. And this one is from uh, Deb who is the one that Sharon was replying to says, Is this the first time I ever catch you live? Love your quilts. You're such a smart quilter. I'm a beginner and I'm learning so much for you. And that's thank you from Deb C. And then I heard my phone jingle. Did you hear my phone jingle? Sometimes I get so used to that jingle I don't hear it. Here is a photo. This is from Nell. And she says, edging flannel blankies for my goddaughter's baby girl due in March. Two done, six to go. And her photo is right there with Quilt Cam. And I see her machine and I see all kinds of pink stuff going on there. So she's doing the edging on flannel um, receiving blankets. Really nice to hear from you, Nell. She called me on my birthday, sweetheart. That means so much to me. Um, we share our birthdays not very far apart. This is from B Vicki Beasley. How are you, Vicki? She says, I'm working on blocks that were inspired from a tiled bathroom floor. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm guilty of that. I was in Independence, Kansas doing a trunk show, and this tile block was in the ladies' restroom. You just never know where inspiration will hit. Have a great night. Oh, that is cool. So it's kind of one of those um, partial seam kind of square kind of deals. You know, where you, you kind of go all the way around, but the first one is with a partial seam so that you can go back and complete it. Awesome. That's going to have a really neat woven look to it, Vicki. Rebecca, she says, I always realize it's quilt cam half an hour after it starts. Then I decide I can catch you tomorrow afternoon in reruns. Okay, but it's not too late because we're going right now. This is from uh, Linda from Maine who says, working on string blocks. Wonderful. And let's see. 
She says, I just got my Celtic solstice from the Long Armor. Love it. I took your class in May of 2013, Jamestown Landing in Maine, working on my string blocks too. And so she's doing the exact same thing I'm doing. So we're, we're twinners tonight. This is from Seth Greek who says, hey, Bonnie. Hey, Seth, from all of the quilters out here. Andrea says, I'm putting the binding on a quilt I am making for my cousin who is getting married this summer. His dad, my favorite uncle, died last November. So this quilt is made from his dad's flannel and dress shirts. How neat is that? It's a wedding quilt for her cousin made from his father's shirts. That is really, really memorable. How neat. All right, let's do some more on here. These blocks have a deadline, so we've got to keep them moving through. Tomorrow is my packing up day. I leave Saturday for Tucson. And this is the, the wonders of Facebook, you guys, or the internet in general. Um, when I was in seventh grade, so I was 12, going on 13, I had a best girlfriend, and she lived about three blocks up, you know, down one street and, and up one up one more, and we were inseparable, and her name is Julie. A couple of years ago, she found me on Facebook through a common friend that we had both friended, and she recently, she was in California, and within the last year or so, got married to a guy that we also went to school with, that we lived on the same street, same neighborhood, but they connected, reconnected through Facebook also because we were friends with some of the same people. Well, she married him, moved to Arizona where he is, and I get to see her on Sunday, the first time um, since graduating high school. The uh, last time I saw her was graduation night in June of 1980. So I'm, I'm really, really tickled, really excited. And this is, this is, the wonder of the internet. You know, to find somebody before there was the internet, you would look in the yellow pages or call information or try to find somebody with the last name in a nearby area, try to find their parents or whatever it was, brothers or sisters, so that you could find where this person went. And now all we have to do is hit Google and type their name in. And it's just really bizarre. But I'm I'm very, very excited to see her. And she was just a blast. And some of my fondest childhood memories are of hanging out with Julie and the shenanigans we got up to when we were 12 and 13 and 14. So that'll be neat. Have you reconnected with any of your childhood friends? through Facebook, you got a fun story, email me, let me know. That would be a fun topic for conversation here. Okay, so here's another piece that's a little bit wider. It's on the limit of paper bag brown. If I'm going to use neutrals as a background, this is about as dark as I go. If it's darker than a brown paper bag, then it's too dark to be a light background. But I think it's almost too dark for what I'm wanting to do with this quilt. So we may pass on that one. But this guy, I think I do like this guy. I'm going to cut it this way so I can cover two corners with it. Leaving myself that seam allowance all the way around. Love these. I love these. Okay, so this guy too. Paper bag brown, but probably too dark for what I want to do for this quilt, although I would do it um, on another quilt, no problem. This one I think would be okay, and that could be a corner. Here's another recircled, recycled shirt part. Yeah, I could get an inch and a half out of this, but at this point I'd rather have it in the strings. I like a better use of the shape and of the fabric that way. OK. 
Okay. I'll use that one here. I really love the playing with neutrals all together. Low volume or light colored or whatever you call it. It's just a very nice, fresh, and fun look. The more you put in it, the more interesting it is. Now, can you imagine this piece if it were just all white on white, cream on cream, marble on mother, beige on beige on oatmeal? Not nearly so fun as these little... Now we're out in the whole house or just the basement. Uh -oh. I have no power. 